What's up everyone, I'm Guy, and this is Just Bluefish Watch Reviews, and today you're watching my weekly show, Sunday with Guy. It's a series that I do try to do every Sunday, where I do things like I answer viewer questions and comments, or sometimes, like today, I just talk about topics that are on my mind. And yeah, today, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about these watches. And I wanted to see if I could figure out which one of these is the best Omega Seamaster. But before we do that, a real quick shout out and a thank you to Exquisite Timepieces for loaning me these watches for the video. Exquisite Timepieces is my local Omega authorized dealer located here in Naples, Florida. So if you're interested in these watches or any other watches that they sell, I really highly recommend you getting with them. You can reach out to my buddy over there, Joe McHale, and you can do that via his email, which is joe at exquisitetimepieces.com, or you can call the store directly at 239-227-2932. Now, while both of these watches wear the Seamaster badge, they are very different Omegas from one another. And to try to keep the confusion to an absolute minimum, when I say the Seamaster Pro or Professional, I'm talking about the Diver 300M. And I will be referring to the Seamaster 300 as the Heritage model because of its vintage-inspired classic designs. Now, I was kind of curious what you guys thought when it came down to these two watches. So I did put up a poll on my YouTube community page, I don't know, a week or two ago, I guess, and I asked the question, which is the better of these two Seamasters? And the results, they were a little bit surprising. See, I was personally expecting the Pro model to get the overwhelming majority of the vote. But as it turns out, only 56% of you prefer the Diver 300M Pro, to 44% of you preferring the Seamaster 300 Heritage. And that was way closer than I was expecting, because based on my experience talking to guys all over the years, most everyone has said that they prefer the professional model. Now, if you're wondering what's on the wrist today, this is a Seiko Solar Quartz Chronograph. It's brand new to me. It is an amazing watch, and I'm gonna have a full review video of it on the channel here in the very near future, so stick around for that. But first, do me a favor, hit that like button if you're enjoying this video. And then, if you're not already, do me a favor and subscribe. And of course, ring the bell icon so that you get notified of when this Seiko Solar Quartz Chronograph review comes out and all the rest of my videos. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, with all that said, what makes these watches different? Well, honestly, almost everything. But first, let's talk about the size differences. The Pro model comes in at 42 millimeters in case diameter, while the Heritage is 41 millimeters in diameter. And yeah, that's not a big difference, but because of the dramatically different case shapes and the differences in the other dimensions, the professional model feels a lot bigger in the hand and, of course, on the wrist. Now, regarding the rest of the dimensions, the Pro has a whopping 49.9 millimeter lug to lug length, whereas the Heritage has a 48 millimeter wingspan. So at nearly two millimeters in case length differences, they do feel significantly different to one another. Now the differences between the lugs is 20 versus 21 millimeters, with the Heritage model being a bit of an odd duck with that 21 millimeter lug width. But this difference doesn't feel all that significant, at least not nearly as much as the wingspan difference. Finally, we have the thickness differences, and the Pro Diver comes in at a slimmer 13.6 compared to the 13.9 millimeter thickness of the Heritage model. But again, these are not significant or very noticeable differences between the two. But yeah, I have to say that I feel like the Pro Diver 300M feels much chunkier overall, both in the hand and on the wrist. And that's because of, first of all, the two millimeter difference in the wingspan. That is huge. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but two millimeters is big. And of course, because the Pro Diver has that traditional liar lug profile case shape that Omegas have become known for. It is, it's a case design we've seen on Seamasters for decades. It's a similar design that we have seen on Speedmasters as well. And while it is quintessentially Omega in design, it does come across, at least to me, a little bit chunkier compared to a slimmer straight lug design. 
Now, the heritage model, on the other hand, feels a lot smaller because of that more refined and classically designed case shape. But if you're like me and you have a smaller wrist, and my wrist is six and a half inches, you might actually prefer the size and the fit of the Heritage model to the Pro model, which honestly is the main reason why I thought that the Heritage was my all-time favorite between these two watches. Then I have to say, I got both of them side by side in my hands, and I've had them for a week now, and I really looked at them closely. And what I gotta say is this. While I do like the size of the Heritage model, and I love the fit of it on my wrist, the Seamaster Diver 300M Professional just kicks its ass in almost every other way. And most of all, the Professional dominates when it comes to the watch face, the dial design, the hands, and the readability and legibility. The dial on the Pro model is so approachable, it's so readable, it looks like a million bucks with its high polished elements and its wave pattern texture. I really can't say enough good things about it, and setting these watches side by side makes the Heritage model look a little bit bland by comparison. And look, don't get me wrong, I think that the Heritage model dial does look nice, and obviously it's supposed to have an element of simplicity because it's based on and inspired by a vintage watch model. But let's be fair, the dial, it is hard to read. It lacks contrast, and it really is kind of bland, flat, and plain looking. And while there are aspects of those types of designs that I like, again, next to the Pro model, I have to say it really does fall flat. Now, that's why I went from being an ardent advocate for the Heritage model to a convert of the Church of the Seamaster Diver 300 meter Professional. And look, I would never tell someone not to buy the Heritage model if they liked it, and I wouldn't question them if they said that they preferred it over the Professional. I mean, I was one of those people myself not too long ago, at least up until recently. But yeah, since then I've flipped 180 degrees on this debate. Now, all of that said, I'm not going to go over all of the specs of each watch. I'm not going to nitpick every single difference and similarity. I've got full review videos of both of these watches up on my channel, and I'll link those down in the video description of this video if you'd like to go back and reference either of those videos. But I did want to talk about these watches in a general sense, and talk about why I went from being a diehard Heritage model fan to the professional model convert. And with all that said, I want to drop one more final truth bomb on you guys that might be a little bit shocking. Personally, I would not purchase either of these watches. Because while I think they're two of the best dive watches on the market, and I do love both of them for their quality, for their design and their styles, and in particular in the case of the professional model, for its value, both have issues that are, for me at least, non-starter issues that I just can't overlook. But before I hit on those issues, I do want to point out the value proposition of the professional model. And yet, $5,900 for a luxury diver, this caliber and quality on a bracelet, it's really insane how good of a value this watch is. I own a Rolex Submariner, and I do. I absolutely love it. But at over $10,000 retail, the Omega blows the Submariner away when it comes to value for money. And it's arguably a better watch, too. And if it's not better, it's easily just as good. For almost half of the price, that is freaking crazy. Now, with that said, what are those non-starter issues for me when it comes to the Pro model? Now, obviously, it's got to be the size. It's just too big for me and for my personal taste. And more importantly, it presents and it wears even bigger than those dimensions might suggest. Don't expect it to wear like a 42 millimeter watch. The bracelet has next to no taper. It's nearly 50 millimeters in lug width, or lug to lug width, I should say. And it's just way too beefy. It's, it's fairly thick. The case shape is kind of chunky. And while it might be 42 millimeters in diameter on paper, I have to say that it wears more like a 44 or a 45 millimeter watch. And while I do think it's an amazing watch, I would never feel comfortable wearing a watch that is both this big and presents this large, at least on my six and a half inch wrist. Now, for other people with seven inch and 
eight inch wrists, it's not going to be a problem. But for me, yeah, it is just too large. That's a non-starter. Now regarding the Heritage model, readability on this watch is bad. And that's one of the most important aspects of a watch, in my opinion. And the dial on this one just, it's insanely hard to read in anything but the best lighting situations. Now for that alone, it's a non-starter. But when it comes to value, I think that this watch is a little bit too expensive. And look, it's not as bad as a Submariner, it's not 10 grand. But it also doesn't retain its value like a Rolex does, so there's that to consider. Finally, there's the questionable finishing on the case and the bracelet. And it's not questionable because it's bad finishing. It's questionable because of the choice of finishing style. I mean, it's a tool watch with a ton of polished surfaces, which I have to say, I don't hate it, but it's also not what I prefer. Now, if I was in the market for a luxury diver, unfortunately, neither one of these would make my list. But and this is an important but, when somebody asks me what is the best one and done luxury dive watch to buy, my answer is always either the Omega Seamaster Diver 300M Professional or the Tudor Black Bay 58. And until something new comes along to dethrone these watches, that will continue to be my answer to that question. All right, guys, that'll wrap this one up for today. Thanks for tuning in and checking out the video. As always, I appreciate it. And of course, thanks to Joe McHale and Exquisite Timepieces for getting these watches over to me for the video. I greatly appreciate that. Now, with all of that said, I guess it's time to sign off and say, until the next one, bye now.